Well, good morning and welcome to you. Good morning. morning. All right, there we go. This is the day the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome, Pastor Bowdorf. We're very happy to have you with us today as our guest uh, preacher. And, uh, you know, Pastor Bowdorf was with us, helping me as soon as he retired from St. John Darien. And he helped out as a visitation pastor and was uh, assisting me in ministry here at Trinity. And then he goes and moves to Kankakee area. So, uh, yeah, he's down there in Bourbon A. Um, I still haven't forgiven you because, you know, it's just that travel time. You, you're not able to be here as often. So that's fine. That's fine. We're happy to have you back and welcome to you. All right. Um, today for our announcements, the chancel flowers are given by Debbie Genovese in memory of her mother, Alice Westergaard. So we remember Alice along with Debbie and family today. And uh, in our announcements, there are still opportunities for you to uh, uh, provide chancel flowers. The flower chart is in the narthex by the coffee cart, and you can sign up for flowers there. And uh, there's an announcement that says, Pastor Bob needs help. That is filled by volunteers from the 830 service, so you can uh, skip that one. VBS donations are needed, and that's on page four of our announcements. And then just a reminder, if you have uh, bedding, clothing, soft items like that to donate to uh, the school pod, uh, that is being uh, taken away uh, in just uh, a couple of weeks. So just FYI, the pod is going away, and then it will be empty, and you can bring more stuff. But if you want to get it out of your house right now, uh, now's the time. Our gala is right around the corner. We have so much fun, and I, I hope uh, that you're able to uh, be with us. And this is not just for our church and school families. It's open to anybody. Anybody who wants to come have fun, great food and phenomenal entertainment and a great time of fellowship uh, with others. So if you want more information about this, please see our principal at the gala table after the service. Uh, so just an FYI on that. So Lent is right around the corner. Uh, Ash Wednesday is, drum roll please. Ash Wednesday is Valentine's Day. So uh, to help you out, gentlemen, our Ladies Aid Society will be providing a meal before our uh, Ash Wednesday service at 545. So you bring your loved one with you to church for a meal, downstairs, lower level, 545, and then the worship service, Ash Wednesday, begins at 7 p.m. Now, we also have Ash Wednesday services in the morning, same exact service, so 10 a.m. or 7 p.m. Just know that there is a meal in the evening at 545. All right, what's that? Who's not off the hook? What are you talking about? I've already put in my reservations for you and me. Yes, I was, on, I was first downstairs. Yes. Oh, no, yes, that's us. I, pastoral dispensation to all husbands who bring their wives to the Trinity meal. You don't have to take them out anywhere else. Uh, so just FYI, come and see me. I'll give you a pass. Might not work for me, but it might work for you. Might work for you. Got you covered, Brian. Got you covered. All right, friends, uh, Jacob, anything from you today? Nothing from over there. Fine, be that way. Uh, our school kids are singing today. So uh, raise your hand if you're a school kid singing today. All right. Okay, I can't see. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm looking forward to your song. Can't wait. Thanks for being here. Uh, and uh, this, is the, this is the week where the parents come up and sing with the kids, so we're really looking forward to that. <laughs> Looking forward to that. We don't tell the parents until that day, so, uh, so moms and dads, uh, welcome. So glad that you're here. Uh, all right, friends, would you uh, stand with me and turn to your neighbor and smile and say good morning and welcome?
Let's uh, continue with our worship this morning as we remember our baptism. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We continue with our song. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we gather together this day in your name, thankful for all the gifts that you give to us day by day. We're thankful that you provide for our needs. We ask, O oh God, that you come and be with us and bless our gathering today in a special way. We're so thankful for our students today who will be singing. We're, we're thankful for their parents. We're thankful for our school. We lift it up and ask your continued blessing on our school. We're thankful that we have this opportunity to uh, reflect upon all that you have done for us. 
Indeed, you have sent your Son, our Savior, who humbled himself, came to this earth, gave his all, gave his life for us, life for our life. And we're so thankful for that. We're thankful that we can receive uh, forgiveness that has been won for us at the cross and the victory that is ours at the resurrection. Come and be with us, we pray humbly in your name. Amen. We continue with our confession and absolution. Let us take a moment of silence to prepare ourselves and confess our sins to God. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deed of which I am ashamed, but some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me that I may rest in peace. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to be born into this world and give his life as a perfect sacrifice for us. For Christ was born to live for us, to die for us, that we, by faith and forgiven, will rise with him in victory over sin, death, and the devil. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, you may be seated as we invite a blaze and rejoice choirs forward at this time.
Thank you, Ablaze and Rejoice Choirs. Uh, we thank you very much for your song today. We really appreciate it. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it's a good moment to pause and give thanks. Uh, we thank you for those voices and for these children that, uh, that have graced us with a wonderful message uh, today. We pray, O oh God, that uh, we might be thankful people thankful for forgiveness received, thankful for good gifts, thankful for family and for friends. Help us to be thankful people. Uh, we thank you for your word. We now ask God that you would enable us to receive wisdom from you, open our hearts and our minds, receive your word, and to learn from it, to apply it to our lives. Help us to grow more and more into the likeness of Jesus Christ. And we pray this in his name. Amen. Our first reading today is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, beginning with verse 21. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows on them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? that I should be like him, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their hosts by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1. It serves as the sermon text. And immediately he left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown they brought to Jesus all who were sick or oppressed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, let us go on to the next towns that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, children's message will be uh, with Mr. Grady in the back, so if you want to go with him, you may. We continue with our song, Alive. Walking in my sin, I went 
searching for redemption down a road that had no end. I was walking through the fire. I was living on a run. My flesh lost its desire. I was drowning in the blood. But God, rich in mercy, you came to save. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to hear what Peter has to tell us today, in particular for the gospel for today, to learn how we are to more closely follow you as our faithful living Lord and Savior, and to share the gospel with others around us who don't know you that well or at all, and to be a shining light to them. In your name we pray, amen. My name is Peter, and I was one of Jesus' first disciples. Now many said, I was a leader of disciples. I suppose that's true. I was the first, and I was out front saying things that got me in a lot of trouble. I was a leader in doing things that needed to be corrected. Oh, I know, a lot more is written about me than other disciples. However, there were times I was clueless as to what Jesus was doing, and it was often that I did not get things right. I remember one time in particular at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. My brother Andrew and I, and along with a couple other fishermen, James and John, had just started to follow Jesus. It was a Sabbath day, and Jesus was teaching in the synagogue. You had just about had to be there to understand what was going on. You see, Jesus taught with authority. And we had never heard anyone teach like that before. And then he did something incredible. A man was demon-possessed in the synagogue. And a man began, the demon started to challenge Jesus. So the next thing we knew, the demon was silenced and cast out of the man and out of the synagogue. Our eyes were wide open. 
Our jaws dropped in amazement. We left the synagogue and went to my house. Now, I'm not sure if you know this, but I was married. My wife's mother lived with us. She was sick. She had a fever. Now, that doesn't seem like all that much to you today, but back then, we had very limited medicines and doctors. So if you had fever, you could die from it, from the cause of whatever it was of that. We were worried about her. So Jesus walked in our house. We told her what was wrong <clears throat> Excuse me, with um, my mother-in-law. He went into her bedroom where she's lying down. He took her by the hand, lifted her up, and she was healed. Then she got busy serving us. What a fine meal we had that night. Uh, sure, I was thankful, but even more, we were beginning to see just what power Jesus had. And sure enough, the crowds came. People heard about Jesus, that he could heal the sick and was stronger than demonic powers that haunted them. So they lined up at the door, and they kept bringing and kept bringing and kept bringing people to Jesus. Finally, we just had to stop them so he could close the door and get some sleep. When we got up in the morning, there they were again, but no Jesus. Jesus wasn't in the house, so we went searching for him. And of all places, he's in a secluded wilderness area that people never went to. What was he doing there? He was praying. That didn't make sense to me. Now, you can imagine what I, Peter, was thinking. Jesus had just started his ministry. He got the crowds coming to see him. People were all excited about him. A few more miracles like this, and we'd have an army behind us. No one would be able to resist Jesus. He'll keep us healthy. He'll keep away evil powers we're afraid of. And he'll take charge and rid us of anyone who challenges us. And life will be wonderful. So why was he in that desolate place instead of doing more miracles, instead of building up his popularity and fame uh, like he, I shot, he, thought he should be doing? We told him that people were looking for him. Matter of fact, the whole world was coming to him. And what does he do? He wants to go to other places to preach. Hmm. He wants to go and tell people repent whatever sin is leading them away from God and to come back to believe in him and follow him. I remember his words well. Verse 38 of our gospel for today. Let us go to the next towns that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. I didn't understand. We didn't understand back then at all. Now I know, and now I do. He was in that desolate place because that's where Jesus confronted his temptations. He was tempted in the wilderness to give up his mission of bringing salvation to a world of sin, demonic evils. He'd been sent not to build up an army or overcome governments, but to overthrow Satan. He'd been sent not to carve out a few square miles of ancient Israel so he could build a new Garden of Eden, but to open heaven's gates to us. His mission was not to become a miracle worker and do what those people standing in line at my house wanted him to do, but to do his Father's will and bring eternal life to all people. That was the temptation facing Jesus. Oh yes, he could stick around Capernaum and build his own little empire for a select few of us. But that would have meant abandoning all he came to do. He had been in a desolate place before, remember? In the wilderness, Satan tempted him with this very temptation. If Jesus would just bow down and worship him. Jesus would have none of that. Three years later in the Garden of Gethsemane, the night he was betrayed, the night he'd be beaten and sentenced to die, he was tempted to walk away from his mission of bringing forgiveness of sins, eternal life, and salvation to the whole world. But Jesus would not give in to temptation, no. He goes to the most desolate place of all. He goes to the cross. It's a place teeming with all of our sins. It's a place where all our burdens and hurts are gathered together. It's a place of punishment, our punishment. It's a place of agony and suffering. It's a place of death. It's a place where even God the Father in heaven abandons him to the evils of hell. Yet out of these places of desolation comes our eternal destiny. His mission was to bring forgiveness, to bear our griefs and sins. His mission was to open up heaven's gate to all of us. His mission was to bring eternal life. And on Easter morning, he did just that. Out of a desolate tomb, a grave, a place of death, Jesus rises from the dead, Satan defeated, evil cast aside, death undone, sin no longer having any hold over him. Mission accomplished, salvation won. 
Now I understand all this. Back at the beginning, mm -mm, I didn't. Back then, I was impressed with the crowds and what I wanted Jesus to do for me. Back then, I was thinking too small and too selfishly, but not Jesus. He would not give in to the temptation of pleasing the crowds. No way. He would pray in that desolate place, and then he was on his way to other places to call people to repent, believe in him, and follow him. He was on his way to the cross. He was on his way to the grave. But Easter morning proclaims loud and clear that out of the desolate places, Jesus brings us the gift of eternal life. It's itchy. <laughs> now, I can understand how Peter could get it wrong at the beginning of Jesus' ministry before he heard Jesus died on the cross, and before he walked with Jesus when he was raised from the dead. I get that. But what about us? Yes, what about us? We know all that. I'm afraid we don't always get it either. Sometimes we're like Peter at the beginning of Jesus' ministry before he understood why Jesus came. Sometimes we are like Peter in his life. Now, there's an Internet article I read, actually it's printed in the New York Times 2010 by Jeffrey McDonald, Congregations Gone Wild, that is, hits the mark for us today. So I'm going to share that with you. And the article says, Congregations that are suffering loss of members are those that are challenging people to repent, do what's right, to share in the suffering of others, do personal devotions and outreach ministry. The pastors whose sermons make the comfortable uneasy are not well received. People want their church to confirm their preferred political positions or say it's okay to spend so much money the way they want. Now, this last line in the article is always going to be true, unfortunately. And I quote, The pressure's on for short sermons that tell amusing stories and make people feel good about themselves. That's never going to change, folks. Peter thought Jesus should be doing these kind of things that would draw people to him and make him more popular. Bring in the crowds. Everyone, including Peter, was looking for his next miracle. It's okay the miracles he did in the past, but what are you going to do for me next time, next day? But what do we see instead? There's an aha moment here. Jesus quietly withdrawing to new places where he could preach the word and not and avoid the quote-unquote show. So how are we much more like Peter in the beginning of Jesus' ministry? Consider your prayer life. Certainly we are to pray to the Lord about anything. He wants us to bring our request to him. But sometimes I'm uncomfortable with the bulk of our public prayers requests having to do with health or healing. Now, I'm not saying these are wrong. I'm just talking about the bulk of them and about safety and protection, about jobs and money, and how few prayer requests have to do with the growth of church, people believing in and following Jesus, about people doing what is right in their life, about repentance, about stronger prayer and Bible reading and Bible studying lives, and about resisting temptation, about ours and others' salvation. Personally, the number one area for my personal prayers, I'm a prayer warrior from a couple generations before me being handed down taught for praying for people, is to pray for people I know who are unchurched, specifically and especially people who are relatives and friends and people I know. I pray, pray for God to plant the seed of faith in them through me and others, so it's not just getting me off the hook to pray for others to do it, and for them to hear the gospel, be receptive to the gospel, first of all, hear it, and eventually for God to lead them to follow him and live as their, and follow him as their living Lord and Savior. Now, certainly we can pray for health, protection, and even money, but the bulk of our prayers need to focus on why Jesus came, about our eternal destiny that comes out of the desolate places in Jesus' life. Now, a good example of this is the Lord's Prayer. I picked it because it's easy, and if you don't remember once a year when I come here, I always ask you a question. I always try to make it a low-ball, easy question. So uh, it has, the Lord's Prayer only has one petition that is about physical things. And if you know it, just say it out loud, no matter, no matter how many of you say it. What is the one Lord's Prayer petition that talks about physical things? Give us this day our daily bread. Easy. The other six petitions, which tells you how important they are to God, to, to Jesus, when he prayed, the other six petitions focus on spiritual eternal matters, like, but deliver us from evil or the evil one. 
So the focus, the majority of prayer should be like Jesus on spiritual matters for obvious reasons. Now, don't get me wrong. You go back to Jesus, uh, Peter's house. Jesus was casting out demons and healing people. And today our Lord blesses us with good health. He gives us medical facilities to alleviate our pain and suffering, even COVID-19. Now, we live in a country with vast wealth and comfort. Jesus is our shield protection day by day. He has answered our prayers, and we need to thank him for all these blessings that we usually take for granted. But don't stop there. Jesus' mission was far bigger than that. When you get right down to it, we need to become more like Peter after he learned what Jesus' mission was about, why he came. We have more than 2,000 years of church history and teachings to help us to see what Jesus did for us and does for us. We have the Bible reading study as over and over again it points to Jesus dying on the cross and Jesus rising from the dead. We have Sunday school adult Bible classes here at Trinity to teach us why Jesus gave up his life for us on the cross. We have artwork and jewelry that take us to the cross. You look around, you see, obviously, well, you can't with a screen, sorry, but you can see Jesus, the good shepherd, holding a sheep and the sheep standing by him who represent us. And also, something very simple that I do every day, you can do too, uh, as the early church did, we can pray prayers based exclusively, excuse me, primarily on scriptures. So we just change a few words at times, especially Psalms, and we have prayers. So I have a number of relatives, friends who have given me Bible verse, and they're, they're called Life Goal Bible verses that pray for leading them from where they are in their relationship to God to where God wants them to be. That's a big deal, big Bible verse. I pray every day for people for years, decades, for a couple, for a few people. So I try to keep short verses because my memory is shorter than it used to be. So for example, Hebrews 12, verse 2, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, NIV version, New National Version. Shorter version, the message translation from 2000, keep our eyes on Jesus. So every day I pray for a number of people for keep your eyes on Jesus, keep your eyes on Jesus, keep your eyes on Jesus, keep your eyes on Jesus. A very simple prayer, but profound prayer. You can do the same. Our worship services lead us to repent of our sins, confess our, our faith in him, and follow him faithfully as our living Lord and Savior. Now, Jesus does bless our lives now, but he does so much more than that. Jesus went to those desolate places, and out of those desolate places, he brings us forgiveness of sins, heaven's gates open wide, and gives us the gift of, offers us the gift of salvation. Yes, out of those desolate places, Jesus brings us the gift of eternal life. Amen and amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus as our living Lord and Savior. Amen. All right, friends, I invite you to stand as we continue with, the, con with uh, the confession of our faith. We'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess our Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers today, prayers have been requested for the following. For Salam Ministry in California, Pastor Hisham Shahab was here last week, and he told me that their outpost, their mission in California, 
their main worker there uh, moved on to a new position uh, in ministry, and so they're looking for a replacement there. So he asked if we would uh, pray for Salam Ministry in California, and that's for the ministry outreach to Muslims in that area. We pray for Jesse, Arthur Hartwig, Shirley Phillips, Bruce Endy, Eileen Stonies, Bill Ernst, Justin Rittenhouse, Scott Brown, Glenn Mann, Neil Cardosa, Brian Murray, Lisa Bennis, Diana Kidder, and Richard DeWitt. These are all continuing health and healing prayer requests. For our sister in Christ, Lori Piper, who continues in hospice care. For Debbie Sipley, who has multiple health issues, who requested your prayers today. And for Pastor About Our Wife, Marilyn, who will be having shoulder surgery tomorrow. We will lift her up in our prayers today as well. And uh, so let us go now to the uh, Lord and lift our uh, brothers and sisters up in prayers. We pray. Lord God of mercy, you showed your great love for us by sending your Son to save and redeem us. Give to your church courage to proclaim with boldness this gospel to all people by all means. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God of power, you hold all things in your hand. Raise up good and honest leaders who will defend our liberty and inspire our service, following the wisdom of your word in the cause of justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God of healing, give strength to the weak and sustain the weary in the time of trouble. Deliver the sick by your grace, especially those we have named before your altar today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God of peace, you give hope to the weary and comfort to those troubled in mind. Give hope to those who despair, comfort to those in pain, courage to those who grow faint, relief to the addicted, that we may finish the race and receive the crown of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God of truth, you have given us life that we may treasure your mercy and manifest in words and deeds your goodness and love to the world. We thank you for the opportunity to share the good news of Christ with students. We ask your blessing on Trinity Lutheran School. We're thankful for the moms and dads and grandparents who are here with us today, so blessed by the song that our students sang. We ask, O oh God, that you would continue to watch over our students and bless them with health and safety and strength and give them wisdom to learn all about this world with our songs of praise, accept all that we bring to you in our gratitude and praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, with confidence in your mercy, we come before you with the prayers and petitions of your church, praying you would provide for us in all things that are good, wholesome, and beneficial, and keep us from all things that are harmful, that we may be preserved from evil, and kept to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And receive the blessing of God. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and abide with you forever. Amen. We continue with our song, The Way. Through every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance, I believe that you are my fortress, oh, you are my portion. 
Marilyn still here? Oh, you're over there, Marilyn. Hey, now we know what Dave looked like in the 70s, right? I mean, come on. You had long hair like that, didn't you? No? No? Oh, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Hey, thank you, uh, praise team. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. I like the hair. I like the hair, personally. You, you like that? Yeah, it's like, right, yeah. Uh, See you right there. Um, you know, we've had little kids call him Jesus. So, uh, uh, and thank you, students, those who sang today. We appreciate you, Trinity Lutheran School students. <laughs> Friends, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll go.